This is a report tutorial to assist you as you evaluate the estrogen portion of your dried urine test for comprehensive hormones. So uh, presumably this is applicable to women who are premenopausal who find themselves in the normal range for estrogen. So and it can depend on which estrogen metabolite you're looking at, but you want to look at them as a whole. Uh, but typically you're going to find premenopausal women, we hope, within this range between the stars here, which is well above the postmenopausal range, which is in that little purple band. So as you, as you look at those, we're looking not only at the absolute levels, then you also want to look at the progesterone levels to see if we're looking at estrogen dominance. You know, are the estrogens as a class and as a general rule uh, higher than the progesterone metabolites within these ranges? Um, and of course, putting the most weight in that evaluation on estradiol. That's your primary estrogen. It's the one that's by far the most potent in terms of estrogenic effect for this particular patient, not your particular patient, but this particular patient in this example. You know, it's on the upper side of normal. So some of these other estrogens, uh, you can see a couple of them on the higher side of normal, a couple of them on the lower side of normal. So this patient, it's a little bit of a mixed bag, but overall, you know, kind of a normal to high normal picture, again, putting extra weight on the estradiol as the most potent estrogen and then we want to evaluate well how's that estrogen being metabolized so we can see that in this particular case and in every case what we're expecting is about 70 percent to go down that 2 hydroxy pathway which makes metabolites that are generally considered more favorable in terms of their protective nature and in this example the patient makes over 80 percent so there's an overproduction or an over metabolism of the pathway you'd like to see preferred and the expected levels of the other metabolites which have less favorable characteristics are generally at 10 and 20 percent and in this case they're less than 10 percent for both of those uh, so that would be what for what most people consider good phase one metabolism this hydroxylation that that's a good favorable situation there uh, another thing to evaluate when these estrogens are higher these primary estrogens, especially E2, even if you have a good percentage of the 2-hydroxylation, uh, in this case is not a good example of that, but if all of these metabolites are lower within the reference range than E2, than E1 um, are, then it can represent sluggish phase one metabolism where even if you've got appropriate percentages of the metabolites, uh, if it's just not going to those metabolites, something sometimes that's a, a pattern that you'll notice in terms of addressing you know, why the estrogens might be on the higher side of normal. So that's your estrogen levels, that's your phase one metabolism as we make those metabolites, and then you've got a part of phase two metabolism, which is methylation. This is considered a protective step where we turn the two OH estrogens into the methylated products. Now, in this particular example, the levels are relatively low for both compounds. That's not the point of this evaluation. For this particular part of the evaluation, what we're looking at is the relative conversion. So we don't care about the absolute levels. What we care about is knowing that this 2OH in this example is 1.5. Usually the methylated product is about half of that. So in this case, that would be 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.7, somewhere in there. And it's at 1.4. So that's relatively high, which is why the methylation in Index looks high because there is a lot of conversion going on. In this example on the bottom, the 2OH estrogen is about the same, 1.9, uh, yet the 2-methylated uh, product is a lot lower. So then the relative methylation is relatively low. So in that case, you may have a nutrient deficiency. You may have a genetic defect for your methylation, and that's worth exploring and potentially supporting as this is important not just for your estrogens, but also for DNA, um, for catecholamines. So we want to look at the estrogens, phase one and phase two in this premenopausal woman who's got relatively normal levels, then evaluating the metabolism can be important as well.